Excuse us. No, pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Just remove it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. Okay, so, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. This shit better be good. Let's hope so. Shh. The movie's starting. I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. I am so sad. So and very, this... very sad. <laughs> this is the Silver Linings <laughs> Playlist. A podcast that tries to find the silver... <laughs> Silver lighting yeah. some of cinema's bleakest endings. <clears throat> huh. You okay? <clears throat> I'm good. I'm good. Mm-hmm. It's a good joke. I think I nailed it. <laughs> um, thank you for tuning in, everyone. Uh, as you can tell by the episode title this week, we're talking about Contagion. Very popular film right now. Topical. Uh, very, very topical. Very topical. Uh, very topical. So, yeah. This is... Uh, second episode of season four we thought what better movie to talk about right now than the one that's been on everyone's minds for the past few months um it's interesting that like this was the one to really spark people's interest again and not all the no, other no love for outbreak i know outbreak got i mean it's it's kind of in the news but not nearly as big as contagion yeah yeah like I but mean, what's the better Contagion, film? Contagion's better. Yeah, I guess. Let's so. just be real. Though. Contagion's better. I mean, Outbreak is just insanity for an hour it and a half. Is. No one tries to nuke a town in Contagion. Yeah, I mean that I remember. But I guess we'll, well get into it. Um, but Contagion is—is is it a movie? Because it doesn't feel like a movie. <laughs> it's a goddamn documentary, is what it is. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, well, we'll get into it. If you are new to the show, uh, first of all, thank you. Second of all, uh, what we like to do here is we watch movies that uh, don't end in a typical happily ever after fashion that uh, leave you feeling probably not in the best state of mind, um, either for the characters or for yourself. And what we like to do is, at the end of it, we like to try to find a glimmer of hope, a silver lining, if you will, at the end of it, to pick your spirits back up. Something to that you can take away feeling, well, at least that happened. That's some good that happened. And this is interesting because this movie, technically, they they kind of end with everything being settled. But do they? Is, I guess, the bigger question. And... You know, it, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's also again relevant to what's going on today in more ways than one. Well, maybe because let's keep in mind we're recording this probably what a month before it releases. <laughs> yeah, I really hope we're allowed to go outside <laughs> by the time this drops. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this movie a little, little peek behind the curtain for the folks there, but. Yeah. You know, I mean, we don't record this day of. We're not that. We don't have our <laughs> shit together that much. No. Um, well, I guess let's break into it. Mally, do you want to tell us what your relationship is with this movie? How many times you've seen it? When the first time you saw it? So I saw it in theaters. Lois and Soderbergh, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, hadn't rewatched it probably since theaters. Um, maybe once. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So... Um. I work in production. I think we all know that. Um, so I watch our show shut down because of all the pandemic nonsense on Friday the 13th back in March. Yep. I finished. We finished our day. I picked up a pizza, went home and watched this movie. <laughs> um, and then I rewatched it for this episode, but. Like, I don't know, watching it then, like, knowing that, you know, like, the city, like, all the productions were shutting down, restaurants were closing, like, shit, every, like, everything was shutting down. I was like, fuck, like, damn, like, I wonder if stuff is gonna, like, get this bad, like, in that movie. Mm -hmm. And so far, this, like, this movie, like, it hits some shit on the, like, it nails some shit. A lot of stuff, yeah. Um, I don't think, at least so far, excuse me, we haven't gotten to, like, the pandemic levels of this movie. Yeah. But, goddamn, like, it, it hit, like, this movie just hits different this year. Mm-hmm. Like, Contagion in 2020 is a terrifying <laughs> film. 
Yeah, no, uh, I do have some small critiques of the film. Oh, I have a lot of critiques of the film. Yeah, um, there's one. I'm just gonna say there's one plot line that I just don't care about. Yeah, I probably can guess what it is because I yes. have some issues with the plot line too. Uh, yeah. So as Molly said, we are recording this well in advance. We're like mid-April right now, um, so things could have changed based on Contagion's radar. Like where God, we, I hope so because I'm bored. Um. Yeah, I also saw this movie in theaters. Uh, I went, if I recall, I went alone, and I don't remember what the circumstances were, because I don't typically go to movies alone, unless there's, like, just no other way. Um, oh, but, I stay going to movies alone. Well, uh, not to disparage anybody that does, I kind of have started going to them more by myself recently, and I do enjoy it, but I don't remember, I didn't remember any aspect of this film other than Gwyneth Paltrow and Matt Damon were in it. I didn't remember anything else. It was like a, you know, seeing it in the theaters the first time was like a warm blanket just covering me because I don't remember anything else. It was it just washed over me like a wave. Um, and then I saw the the spike in popularity, um, you know, when this all started. And I was like, you know what? I, I guess I could revisit that. I like Soderbergh. And I went back and... Yeah, like you said, it's it it does get a lot of things pretty accurate. Uh, I don't think we've gotten to the rioting part yet, where people are looting and stuff. However, this past week have has been uh, exhibitions all across the country of people protesting. Which, yeah, but for different reasons. Like in the movie, people are protesting because they need food and they need you know basic supplies, and we're protesting wanting to go back to work. Which is yeah, I will so say bizarre. the one th- the big thing this movie gets wrong is that it assumes the U.S. population isn't as dumb as we actually think. <laughs> it it doesn't we take are it to fucking idiot. It doesn't take it to the to account basic human stupidity, <laughs> and it, um yeah, and and how capitalism apparently reigns supreme. But there is some interesting oh. other aspects in terms of. That whole consumerism that we'll get into when we get into the movie. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, kind of like you said, back March 13th, I guess, Friday the 13th, we at my place of business had officially gotten everyone working remotely. Um, oh, we shut down on the same day. That's adorable. Well, yeah, like we had, I got word from my boss like a week before. Uh, for those who don't know, I work in the advertising portion of the film industry the trailers and everything i got a message from my boss saying hey this coronavirus thing it's it could potentially put los angeles in a state of lockdown we need to figure out a way to work from home and if anyone knows anything about the film industry when it comes to the post side of things uh there are huge security implications um that are put in place. Like there are huge, huge things that have to be taken into consideration. So getting people to work remotely is not as simple as just, well, just take your computer home and you're good to go. Like we had to get approval from every single studio, HBO and Netflix, like all of them had to be like, yep, this all looks good on paper, you know, going through like, here's what we're doing. Here's the security precautions we're putting in place, etc. And I managed, I managed to get the whole, company working off site in less than a week it was pretty intense um but i gotta say it's surprisingly going well like no real hiccups yet so we'll see apparently this lockdown's supposed to lift uh in may for california i don't know if they're gonna extend that or not but we will fucking see we will see and by the time this comes out we'll have probably an answer to that um yeah yeah, uh, is there anything else you want to talk about before we get into the details of Contagion? Let's jump in, man. Let's go. Um, yeah. First things first. Mm-hmm. Stacked fucking cast. It is a stacked cast. So, you know, uh, as we talked about the years 2011, director is Steven Soderbergh. Do you want to run down this cast list? Like who you remember being in the movie? All right. Uh, Matt Damon. That's one. My fucking Marion Cotillard. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I pronounce her name right. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Don't don't name any. Hang on, hang on. I got this. I got this. I got this. You I got, got this. Four Kate left. Winslet. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Three more. Oh my god, why am I spacing on his name? I've been rewatching Hannibal, and he's one of the leads in the fucking show. He played Morpheus. Mm-hmm. Lawrence Fishburne. Mm-hmm. Two more. Oh fuck! Really? Mm-hmm. Oh Jesus! Who's um, the sort of uh, Jude Law? Jude yep, Law. Yep. That's. Yep. Um. There's one more. There's one more. There's one more. Um, Previous Dimitri movie. Martin. What? Who? Dimitri Martin. What? Well, Dimitri Martin is in it, but that's not um who we. Are. Basically, for no, anyone who's interested, <laughs> for anyone who's interested, uh, my cast list I go based off of Roger Ebert's uh, review on his who website. Did I miss? Uh, Elliot Gould. Oh, son of a bitch! Mm-hmm. How did I forget the Gould? Yeah. Well, he's got a fairly it's small role, but important role in this movie. Um, I, I, think, I think he has less screen time than Dimitri Martin. <laughs> yeah, probably. Also, uh, what the fuck is Dimitri Martin <laughs> doing in this movie? You know what? I forgot completely he was in this movie, and then I rewatched the trailer, and I was like, what? yeah, exactly. Like, what the fuck? Why is he in this? Oh, no. I was like, because this was like, again, I watched this movie like the night, like, on Friday the 13th, like, the night we shut down. So, like, it was before the whole, like, stay-at-home order was placed. So, like, mm-hmm. there was a friend watching it with me. Mm-hmm. And but she, like, she's like, wait, pause the fucking movie. <laughs> she's like, does that dude look a lot like Dimitri Martin to you? I was like, that is Dimitri Martin. She's like, <laughs> what is he doing in this movie? That bowl cut I was like, is I know. undeniable. Believe me, we were confused then. Yeah. Yeah, I know it was a shock when I saw him, too, like, in the trailer. And I was like, well, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> Um, the budget of this movie was sixty million dollars. It grossed one hundred and thirty-seven million dollars worldwide. Um, I read an article recently that said that because of the COVID pandemic, that this movie is the second highest valuable product that Warner Brothers has right now, behind the Harry Potter franchise. Like that's how popular uh, it is. That makes sense. Uh let's be honest. I we've been quarantined for what, like a month now? Yeah. Have I rewatched the entire Harry Potter franchise? Yep. <laughs> um currently And honestly, I started re I started watching the Lord of the Rings franchise yesterday. It's not a bad and idea. And I only have Return of the King left. Uh Very currently sits yesterday, Nathan, thanks for asking. Currently sits at eighty five percent on Rotten Tomatoes. And yeah, that is that's fair. Eighty five percent. That's good. That's decent. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, do you want to get into the trailer? Sure. All right, we'll discuss on the flip. It was a groundbreaking ceremony for a new factory. Did you mention seeing anyone who was sick? Anyone on a plane at the airport? No. She said she was jet lagged. The average person touches their face three to five times every waking minute. In between, we're touching doorknobs, water fountains, and each other. Matt. Mom? No, no, uh, uh, go up to your room, honey. So we have a virus with no treatment protocol and no vaccine at this time. I had a seizure this morning, Beth. Yeah, she before? had a history of seizures? No, no, no. Allergies? No. As of last night, there were 32 cases. Unfortunately, she did die. Right. Can I go to the Mr. Armoff, your wife is dead. Whoa, dude, spoilers. What are you talking about? Okay. What happened to her? What happened to her? Is there any way someone could weaponize the bird flu? Is that what we're looking at? Someone doesn't have to weaponize the bird flu. The birds are doing that. Watch this. It's transmission, so we just need to know which direction. On day one, there were two people, and then four, and then 16. In three months, it's a billion. That's where we're headed. They're calling out the National Guard. They're moving the president underground. People will panic. Get away! It will tip over. The truth is being kept from the world. Cook your samples, destroy everything. Hello. I need you to get me the names of everyone who serviced this room. It's an emergency. You can't panic now. I know. I'm gonna get you home. I got people too, Dr. Cheever. We all do. Don't talk to anyone. Don't touch anyone. Stay away from other people. Get back in your car! We're not sick! 
is a it's long train. It's figuring us out faster than we're yeah. figuring it out. It's mutated. Also interesting that they don't mention Brian Cranston. Yeah. And this is like... Also, that was... Like, just the movie. Yeah. That was, I don't like that trailer. Fuck that trailer. <laughs> and, and this was like peak Breaking Bad time. Like, I get the whole, like, Matt, like, I'm fine with them being like, hey, Gwyneth Paltrow died in this movie. Like, okay, like, cool. But yeah. goddamn, they did, like, they spoiled the whole Kate Winslet storyline right there, too. Fuck. I forgot that Gwyneth Paltrow goes out so quickly in this movie, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. She got, like, she was, like, one of the top build, too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Funny that there's no Cranston, really. I know. He's pretty <clears throat> big. Yeah, he was big at the time. Um, all right, let's get into the movie, which I'd like to start off with with a story. If you, if you'll have me, I don't really have a choice. No, I you can't don't. stop you. No. Nope. Um. So I, I mute you, but that doesn't help the audience. I think, and this is this could all just be placebo, you know. But I think I potentially did have. <laughs> The coronavirus earlier this year. The fuck? Um, I had a really bad cough in January that lasted about a week. <coughs> oh, shit. Oh, boy. <laughs> I had a really uh, bad cough. In my defense, so, we got all this corona shit going on. Pollen has still shown up in Georgia, and it's fucking me up right oh, now. Oh, yeah, my allergies were fucked this past week. Like, dude. Pollen, read the fucking room. Good God. <laughs> Go um, away. But yeah, I had a really bad cough. Wash it all away. Anyway, <laughs> you were sick. I went to urgent care um, and have them just check me out. And I told them, like, look, this is the only symptom I have. It's just this really deep cough. Um, I'm not coughing up anything. It's just a cough, but it's, like, debilitating when it happens. Like, I have to stop and, like, clench my chest. Um the doctor at urgent care comes in and he's probably like twice as old as Elliot Gould in this movie. And he comes in and he just points at me and he's like, uh, what hurts? <laughs> I was like, well, I have a really bad cough. And he's like, all right, do you have a headache? No. Um, do you have chest pains? Not really. He does the quick stethoscope like, to check my heart rate and everything. I was like, oh, this is easy. And he just prescri prescribed me this medication that did nothing. Like, I still had the cough, but after a week, it kind of just went away. And, ever like, since then, I've felt fine. But, I, you know, one of the three big symptoms is having, like, a really heavy cough. Um, the fact that there was no other symptoms, like, was is really, you know, really makes me think maybe I did have it or I had, you know, something i don't know but it was it was pretty crazy because it was like i said it was the only symptom and i've never had anything like that where it's you know you have one thing that no one can really just identify and say that's the problem but speaking yeah. of coughing this movie starts with a cough thought it was yeah, pretty it does. bold pretty yeah uh, i mean interesting way to start the movie off but i guess one of the things i want to talk about because we mentioned it earlier but gwyneth paltrow in this movie um it's weird it's weird seeing her in anything that isn't an MCU film right nowadays, now nowadays yeah yeah and i mean this is back when she kind of cared cuz i have to say like god I, I don't think she gives a shit anymore even when she is in movies like i don't see her trying ever anymore <laughs> um not to mention can we talk real quick about how um out of her fucking mind she is yeah, didn't she make like a candle out of her vagina or something like that? Well, that put that aside, but yeah, that definitely. Oh, oh we're putting that aside that, to address we're, her craziness. We're not even starting with that. Um, have you seen her Netflix show? No. So if you're not familiar, what? she she has a Netflix show that's it's basically just aping uh Chelsea Handler's show where they just try like homeopathic medicines or they like you know, explore, um, like, extreme versions of sexuality. and so Basically, she's just... What? She... Man, it's so frustrating. She basically is trying to peddle 
these fucking homeopathic remedies for things that just promotes quote unquote overall wellness. But it, she's basically just like r- straddling the line of anti vaccination, and it's really fucking infuriating. I can't, I can't stand her. Not to say she's not good in this movie; she's great. But goddamn, like today, going to the I just I cannot deal with at all. Was the whole reason you wanted to cover this movie just to talk shit on Gwyneth Paltrow? Like, be honest. You can be real. I could have picked a better movie if I was going to do that. Um, no, I just, I, I just wanted to... I didn't know if you were aware of how crazy she is. Um, but yeah, the vagina-scented candle, I mean, that's good business, I guess, if you want it. I don't think I would want... And the fact that she says it smells like, what, like... What is what does the scent she said is, her <laughs> vagina smells like? I don't know. It was like wood and like what <laughs> lavender or something like that. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so yeah. contagion. Yeah, you want to get into um. contagion? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't feel like this movie feels very Soderbergh to me. It feels more like yep, Danny Boyle. It feels Soderbergh as fuck to me. It feels very Danny Boyle to me. Like this feels. Like that kind of twenty days later guerrilla filmmaking kind of feel, but on a bigger budget. Maybe it's just like I mean that's kind of Soderbergh's. Thing. I, don't, dude, I don't know, dude. This is a pretty Soderbergh esque movie to me. Uh, I guess when I think Soderbergh, the first thing I think of are the ocean movies that have like a different sort ah. of pacing and structure to them. And this movie just feels. I guess that's that's kind of where I want to go. This movie doesn't feel like a movie to me. Like there's no real villain in the movie i guess you could say like the virus itself is the villain there's no real point i know but there's no there's no structure to make it feel like i'm watching a movie it almost feels like i'm watching a docu-series or something like i guess just again i think i think this was all on purpose yeah it's just i guess when you compare it to something like outbreak where you are covering different uh people at the same time but you still have that narrative that's driving everything that isn't just the virus. Like the only real obstacles that any of the people ever come up against is bureaucracy. Like when uh, Lawrence Fishburne is, or uh, Elliot Gould is being told he can't, you know, experiment anymore. Mm -hmm. And he still does like there's, that's really the only obstacle in this whole movie. And I don't know. I mean, I get, I get what Soderbergh's doing, but again, it just doesn't feel like a movie to me. And I, for what they promoted this movie as, it feels kind of like a betrayal to me. Uh, Interesting. It feels like it was set up to be like this huge, almost disaster movie level kind of thing. Like, uh, and not necessarily an Armageddon, but something along that those lines. And it doesn't, it, 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 that's not what it delivered. It very. Sidebar. I fucking love Armageddon. <laughs> It very much Just throw that out there. <laughs> it very much traversed into like, um, th- they really hammered the scientific aspect of everything, and not so much the emotional beats that the movie gets. Like, I mean, at the beginning, we get you know Matt Damon losing both his wife and stepson in the same day. But that's fucked. Up. They kill a kid immediately. <laughs> they, like they didn't like. I think Face Off still holds the record for quickest like child killing in a movie. Because that movie, right off the bat, it starts. The first scene of the movie is a kid dying. Yeah. So this this movie's a close second in the child murder. Yeah. But uh, which I personally, that's a big draw for me. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I don't uh, know where I was going with the whole child murder thing. Well, I was just but, saying uh, like that's the yeah, only that's fucked no that is like that's like massively depressing that like lose like your wife. And a fucking kid in the same day. God. And, damn. But Matt Damon doesn't even really seem to care that much. Like he as does th- move on pretty quickly. Also, quickly. I'm sorry. The scene where they're telling him his wife's dead, he's like, Okay, can I see her? Can yeah. I talk to her? It's like, no, dude, she's <laughs> dead. He's like, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean see? it's just like this is kind of funny. Yeah. Like I laugh at that scene, and I don't know if I'm supposed to. You're definitely not supposed to. I, you know, I think Soderbergh's going for the. This dude's just so like into, like so in denial. Yeah, like he doesn't. He he he's not 
processing at all what the doctor's saying. But I get it that that it is almost like covering your mouth, kind of laughing at it because it is such a ridiculous way it's directed. But yeah, he doesn't. It doesn't seem to affect him really that much until the end of the movie when he's going through that camera um, mm-hmm. at the very end. Also, another thing in this movie that's fucking hilarious and I laugh at every time is Jude Law's fucking containment suit. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> that oh my god, that shit is hilarious. Yeah, I guess we could the we could talk thing about is is like current. There are people out in the world right now walking around like that and that's hilarious to me <laughs> let's talk about jude law too because it is interesting he that is so good in this movie he's great but it's it's funny because he's how we talked about like art imitating reality because there was this whole thing where the president was trying to push off this chemical that could potentially cure the coronavirus and he was touting it and that's exactly what jude law is oh, doing 100%. in this movie percent and Jew Law is caught at the end for basically doing a fraudulent scheme to get money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, fucking ridiculous. Let's let's just go down the list of things that I noticed that this movie has quote unquote predicted in line with what we're <laughs> going through right now. Because like like we just mentioned, Jude Law uh, that pretty much happened with people yeah, trying full these on Alex Jones type, very Alex Jones type, uh, but. The virus, partially, we find out at the end, originated from a bat. Um, There were, you know, we see, I think it's, is it New oh, York? Oh, no. Can I just talk? It's been real awkward, the fact that I have a massive bat tattooed on my chest. <laughs> <laughs> is it New York? A rough where they're fucking showing, ride this month, man. <laughs> where they're People showing just, the... Like, I, I gotta wear shirts in public. People are just eyeballing me. It's weird. <laughs> is it New York where they're showing, like, mass graves being dug up? To, like, bury the the dead? There has been... Dis- I don't know if they've actually done the mass graves. I know they were talking about doing mass graves in public parks in New York at one point. Well, yeah, at Central... That's so fucked up! Central Park is being converted to, like, emergency hospitals. But I have seen in other countries doing mass graves, so they got that part right. Um... Let's see what else partially originated from a bad massacres uh you know and then there's the the quick montage of people stockpiling on things like hand sanitizer and everything surprisingly yeah. no toilet paper hoarding <laughs> yeah the one thing this movie got wrong honestly yeah. people went for batteries and for for bottled water and hand sanitizer but not toilet paper uh, there's of course the statewide quarantines where you can't uh cross state lines that's they they haven't really officially done that yet, but they have pretty much said stay in place, don't go anywhere if you don't have to, especially over state lines, etc. Um, the one thing that I noticed, and this is something I wasn't aware of, I didn't know that social distancing was already a thing. Like the phrase "social distancing," I thought that was coined during this uh, coronavirus pandemic, but they used that specific phrase in the movie. Which kind of yeah, like I I've heard that phrase before. It's mm-hmm. just you know, it's fucking all. It's all we've been hearing. Yeah, it's it's the most month. popular word or popular phrase in in the past couple months for sure. And of course, there's um, I think it's Lawrence Fishburne mentions you know frequently washing your hands, staying. Mm-hmm. They recommend ten feet apart versus the six feet. But yeah, pretty crazy that they they managed to get the science and the. Uh, the government aspect of things pretty close. Yeah. Hopefully we don't they, get to a lottery they, they, stage. They nailed a lot of things. It's freaky. <laughs> Hopefully we don't get to the lottery stage where we have to figure out who's getting vaccines first, but Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> um Yeah. Okay, what's you so of the storylines? Mm-hmm. Which one's your favorite? I mean, I until they kill her off, I kind of like what Kate Winslet was doing. I love Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet's is probably my favorite. Yeah. I love her storyline. It's so interesting. It's so good. I I mean, and it kind of ties in with Lawrence Fishburne's, but I do like Lawrence Fishburne's a lot. Yeah. Um, like those his two towards the, the, his towards the, the most, end of the movie is fucking awesome. Yeah, those two are the most compelling. Can, um, you know, you mentioned... Can we agree that the worst one Wait, wait, is, wait, wait, wait. wait. Mm, you mentioned this mm, earlier. Can you you mm, said there was one problem you had with a movie that you think a plot line doesn't go anywhere uh is it marion cultiard's fucking yes plot line? <laughs> yes what so what that happens the storyline is so 
goofy. What happens with her at the end? Like, the last I remember, sh- she is with that guy at the airport, and he mentions that he gave, um, I can't remember the actor's placebos. name. Placebos. Yeah, gave him placebos. I think she's going back to the village. She's going back, but is that the last we see of her? Yeah. They kind of just dropped that plot line, like, uh, she went back. And then what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I mean, it was interesting how they set that up with him kidnapping her, taking her to his village, showing them the people. But th- that plot line is so unnecessary because nothing comes of it. It doesn't Not affect really. anything. Like, it's, it's interesting uh, before she gets kidnapped. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, and then it's, once she gets kidnapped, it's like, oh, okay. It's it's kind of like know. a um, cool. how in the book World War Z, how it's telling you different stories about what different people were doing in different locations during the time that the zombie outbreak started. It feels it's like funny this... you say World War Z because I reread it right as yeah. all this started. <laughs> it's it's funny. And there's it's... a lot of shit in that book that hits home too. Yeah. The, the, this movie feels like that. That structure, like, here's Matt Damon's story, here's Fr- Lawrence Fishburne's story. None of them really overlap except for Lawrence Fishburne and Kate Winslet, but I, I don't know. It's that nothing feels finite in this movie except for Matt Damon's story for the most part. But, and even then, he doesn't really go on that much of an emotional arc. It, that's why I say it doesn't really feel like a movie. Like, it doesn't have. Yeah. I mean, I think I think the mo- as far as well rounded, I think Lawrence Fishburne has the best yeah. storyline. Yeah, for sure. Um, especially with how his how his ends. Like, oh, fuck, dude, John Hawks is in this movie. Yeah, love you, that dude. You know, I didn't know who he was, and the first time I saw him, I was like, that guy looks like Diet Sean Penn. Like, <laughs> oh, how you better <laughs> run my man some respect. What else is he in? Because I don't recognize. Oh, him. dude. Uh, He's one of those guys where he's like one of those guys that pops like he's a great character actor. Like he pops up like oh that guy. Yeah. Um he plays like a cult leader in Martha Marcy May Marlene, I mm-hmm. think is what it's called. It's like an indie film starring him and Elizabeth Olsen. It's fucking awesome. Looks like he was in Three um, of Billboards. He, he was in Eastbound and Down. He was in Eastbound and Down. He was in American Gangster. Dude, he's like he's been in some really good stuff, but he's like just one of the like he's just one of those good character actors. Yeah, it looks like he was in um, Lost. He was in Winter's Bone. Yep. I'm just kind of scrolling um, through now. Deadwood. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, he was All in right. Deadwood. Fuck yeah, he was. Yeah, I just didn't recognize him. But he, he but he does have like similar features to Sean Penn, which is all I could think about. Because I <laughs> I will give you that he does. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, dude. Uh, he like he's good in his little bit. With Lawrence Fishburne or whatnot. Yeah. Well, um, th- I was going to say, we talked about, like, obstacles that people have to overcome. There's that whole part where they mention, you know, Lawrence Fishburne's going to have to go to trial when everything is all said and done. But that really doesn't come of anything either. I mean, I guess that's post-movie, but... Yeah. I don't know. Also, what's the time frame of this movie from, like, the beginning to end? They, I can't remember. They go at least half a year, I think. Because I th- I think at one point they're talking about 140 days um, since the virus started, so it's close to half a year. Um, okay. I don't know. I don't know the full. I don't know if it goes past six months, but it does spread a lot quicker. In fact, I I was doing some research and they the well this movie is praised very highly for its scientific accuracy on the whole, but. A lot of the scientists that contributed to the article that I read said that the virus just couldn't sustain transferring that quickly between person to person to spread as fast as it does. Um, hmm. But that being said, it is still pretty. I I will say I do like the cinematography a lot in this movie with how they really focus in on how much. Uh, you know, day to day, people touch their face and touch objects, and how easy it is for a virus to spread. Um, you know, there's close ups of people, yeah. you know, drinking out of glass, people swiping credit cards. It it is it really puts into perspective um, how much we do interact with one another without physically touching each other. And you know, they are there's outlets reporting that you know, when this is all over, that we potentially should be practicing social dis- distancing for, you know, the next year or two. 
and which re- I'm, I'm fine with that. Like, stay the fuck away from me. I don't like talking to people anyway. You know what? I think I say as I record a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should uh, use this this time and this lesson. I'm going to drop a bomb on you. Um, I think we should get rid of the handshake altogether. What do you think about that? I'm fine with that. I don't like shaking hands. Me neither. Let's get rid of the handshake in 2020. I, okay. <laughs> See, I'm a big fan of the silent nod. Just the... Mm. Yeah. Silent nod or... Uh, I love the silent nod. It's glorious. Yeah. I mean, people are talking about doing, like, fist bumps, but with your feet. Like, with your shoes. I'm like, that's the dumbest fucking that's thing That's pussy. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of people were haven't been adopting, like... Like, the week, um, like, leading up to shutdown, like, people were, like, you know, like, fist bumping, but, like, with their elbow. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't want to... Uh, no. You're still touching. That's stupid. <laughs> like, um, why do we need to do anything? Just be like, sup, sup. Yeah. I, I'm, Fuck off. As an, I'm an introvert, naturally, anyway, so this working from home thing has been glorious for me. I think we should keep... Same. That. I don't know if they're doing that in your local grocery stores, but here... They're putting stickers down on the floor um, for when you're waiting in line that are six feet apart. I think we should keep those. Oh, yeah, those. 100%. I think we should keep those permanently. I fucking love it. I, don't I agree. Me. <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? Oh, uh, yeah, the cinematography, I think, is pretty great. Um, <clears throat> it's hard. We keep going, like, we keep talking about real life and mm-hmm. then going back to the movie and then going back to real life. It's hard not to associate... Like, I knew it was going to happen when you told me we were doing this movie. Like, we're going to spend half of it talking about fucking COVID-19. I mean, that's that's the point, right? Like, we're trying to make the season, make the movies a little more relevant if possible. Um, and this has been, you know, the movie that's been on everyone's minds for the past few weeks. We couldn't not cover it. True, um, true, true, true. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have too much more to say about the movie itself. I will say... Um, the amount of cameos in this thing is shocking. I mean, we've covered most of them. Um, Brian Cranston, of course, and Dimitri Martin. Who is the other scientist that works with Dimitri Martin? Because I recognize the one that her. like actually injects herself. Yeah, basically the hero of the movie. <laughs> um, she hasn't been in a ton. Um, God, what is her name? She looks uh, familiar. Uh, I'm looking uh, it up now. Uh, J- Jennifer something. That the actress or the the character. No, the actress. Uh, let me she see. was in something. Um, hmm. uh, God, oh, I can't Jennifer. remember what she's been e- in. It's going to bother me. It's we could Jennifer probably just look this up. E-H-L-E is her last name. L? Oh, I don't. She's in... Don't uh, how you would pronounce that? Zero Dark Thirty. She was in... Oh, yeah. Uh, she was in... I think she was in The King's Speech, too. I'm looking it up. She's in the Fifty Shades franchise. That means nothing to me. The RoboCop remake. Yep, The King's Speech. Okay. Um, oh, oh, it's a different movie. I saw the word sunshine. I was like, oh shit, she's in sunshine. No, nah, different one. Um, anyway, she's great yeah, in this movie. She's good. And again, the hero of the movie, but they she don't really is. Don't make much fanfare about her. <laughs> um, But, I don't know, it's... I don't know. Like, it's kind of weird. Like, this movie doesn't have a protagonist. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't call, like, the trailer almost makes it seem like Matt Damon's the main character, yeah. but he's really not. There's See, not really a main character. That's We're what I, all around. I thought I remembered Matt Damon being the focal point of the story, and he's, he's really, really not. not. <laughs> like, nobody like, really is the hero. It's, of, what, like, it's like how you, it's like the book World War Z that you talked about. Mm-hmm. It's there's no main character in that book. It's just like we're jumping from story to story. Which I don't think transfers well to a screenplay, which is why I say I don't think this movie is very good in terms of being a movie. I think it's fine doing what it's trying to do, but as a movie overall, I don't find it that enjoyable of a watch. Agree to disagree, man. I... I don't think I don't it know. deserves I an 85% it. on Rotten Tomatoes. Keep, keep in mind, I love documentaries, though. I do, too, but... So... Mm. Like I said, I don't know if it deserves an 85%. Just for... Inter- I mean, entertainment value alone, I don't find it... I mean, I think the movie starts pretty strong, 
But I think it gets it kind of drudges along the last two acts. Like I I'm not very entertained by it. I'm not. It feels like I'm checking my watch when they're like, "Oh, well, we we don't have funding. Oh, we can't test it. Uh, we tried to test it, didn't work." And it's just like, "Come on, man." At least have something interesting happen. They, they kind of have some interesting stuff going on with Jude Law, but that doesn't really go anywhere either. I mean, he gets caught pretty quickly uh, for being a fraud. Yeah. But um, one thing that I that I do find frustrating that you deal with in real life versus what Kate Winslet's character is dealing with uh, in the movie is when she's first given that speech about you know the average person touches their face two to three thousand times a day. And the woman sitting across from her, I forgot what her position is, but she's like, so you're telling us that we have to tell people, you know, they can't touch each other, they can't touch themselves. How do we tell the public this? And I'm like, you you do it exactly how Kate Winslet just described it. <laughs> you fucking tell them, hey, stop touching your face, stay away from people. And they take too long to do that. Like, Lawrence Fishburne doesn't come out and say that for, like, weeks later. Um, oh, sidebar on real life. You, you, we're, Dustin and I are both bearded individuals. Oh, I know where you're going with How this. How hard has it been for you not to touch your fucking face? Well, not touching my face, fine. Touching my, like, I guess, do you mean touching your beard specifically? Yes. Uh, like, I'm touching it right now. <laughs> oh, so am I. Fuck. Um, I'm inside my house. I haven't left it. It's fine. Um, yeah, that's. Oh, my dude. It has been brutal. Like, I just, because I will sit here and just, like, twirl like my mustache like i'm a fucking villain Mm -hmm. i do that shit constantly and oh my (laughs) god like oh no i I thought you were gonna say when the um cdc or whoever came out and said we recommend all men with beards shave them off to prevent the spread and i was like you know what i'd rather be self-isolated for the rest of the year before you guys get me to shave my beard (laughs) yeah i was like no i like (laughs) A bunch of people are like, dude, are you going to shave your beard because like the whole like COVID thing? I'm like, no. Yeah. I was like, have you seen me beardless? It's yeah. weird. It's terrifying. It's a little creepy. Um, I mean, I'd be one of those people that are like outside right now protesting, except it would be, don't make me shave my beard on my sign. 100%. <laughs> um, Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, the hey, only other we, thing. We, st- we, we stay bearded 2020, baby. All day. Um, so, yeah. The only other thing. That I would say um, about this movie is the score is fucking terrible. <laughs> I fucking hate it. It's some weird mix between like a shitty industrial kind of sound and like a lo fi electronic hey, hey, Dustin, beat. Dustin, Dustin, you hey. love it. I know. I don't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it I is just, weird as shit. It, I hated it. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if the score works for the movie. Mm hmm. But I would listen to this score just like driving down the street. <laughs> but I don't know if it works for this movie. Yeah, I don't. I I couldn't. I didn't like it. Um, that's. I think that's everything I have for. Well, you Contagion. think the score for Drive is the best soundtrack of all time? So, not the best, but I, it's up there. Not the best though. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I don't really have too. All right, much so else. Dustin. Mm-hmm. This was your choice, so why don't you go ahead and cover how it all wraps up and why you think this movie qualifies for this podcast. <clears throat> oh, okay. Because I'm not going to lie. You don't when think you it does? When you first dropped this, I was like, does it work, though? So this is your time to explain to me why we're covering this movie. So vaccines are distributed uh, at the end of the movie. Um, it's filed away with um, other diseases that we've cured like uh, SARS and MERS and everything. Um, Then we get to see kind of the origin of how this whole thing started. There's a construction crew in China that um, mows down part of a rainforest that goes and disrupts the natural habitat of some bats. Um, As I think the, the scientist that saves the day, she kind of mentions the origins of this whole thing is the wrong bat got with the wrong pig. And that's kind of how things started. Basically, two anomalies. Huh. If that's just not, like, a summarization of all of my relationships. <laughs> um, so, the contagious bat 
flies away, lands on a banana tree, eats a piece of a banana that then falls into a slaughterhouse where a pig eats it. The pig is then slaughtered um, and sent to a chef uh, that, when prepping the pig, does not wash his hands and shakes hands with Gwyneth Paltrow's character, thus setting the movie in motion. Um, The reason that I think this movie qualifies for the show is while they do develop a vaccine at the end of the movie, um, kind of mirroring real life, I don't think any lessons are learned. Um, If you look at the origins of COVID-19 developed from a human ingesting uh, a bat or bat soup, whatever it was. Um, I don't want to disparage any culture for anything that they do that's different than Americans. I don't give a shit if people eat bats as long as it's done safely, you know, however that could be done safely. But, you know, I just read this week that um, China, specifically in Wuhan, they're discussing opening up these wet shops again, which is where the buying and selling of exotic animals like bats for consumption uh, originates from. So they're talking about reopening those, uh, despite the fact that they're criminally like not uh, under any sort of real constraints on what they can and can't sell and how they, the health measures that go into place on how you do that. Um, I think in this movie too, just by the scene of the chef kind of like wiping his hands without properly sanitizing himself before shaking hands with another person, we don't ever find out whether or not that chef, like they know that Gwyneth Paltrow is one of the patient zeros of this whole thing, but they don't know that the chef, it, you know, the going one step back even further that he was a part of it or that the pig was a part of it or the bat specifically how all that came to be like nobody really learned here is exactly how this all started they just know the first person to get it and i kind of feel like while we know that it in reality with coronavirus that it came from the consumption of a bat that i don't think we've learned any lessons in terms of how to properly go about making sure that if that is something we want to do that it's done healthily and humanely and you know we're already talking about like florida just the past two days reopened their beaches while we're still in the midst of this whole thing like i don't think that's fucking that's fucking florida man yeah but i don't think we're already discussing you remember when we lived in florida (laughs) god wasn't that fucked up well the most frustrating thing about the reality of what we're going through is there have been so many reports about people who once had COVID, recovered from it, and then got it again. Like, they're already talking about wanting us to go back to work in a month, saying that, oh, the numbers are decreasing in terms of new cases, but that's it doesn't matter if you can get it a second time. <laughs> like, yeah. if we don't have a vaccine in place, then we're all, just all eventually going to get it. <laughs> I, I, Pretty I, much. I don't think anyone's learned any lessons, and I feel like that's kind of the same way with this movie like that's why i think it qualifies i think yes technically in the movie they did come up with a vaccine but i think that it's just like when you see the sars and the mers and everything else that they have developed vaccines for it's just one more to add to it you know what i mean yeah (laughs) i mean that's that's just how i see the end of the movie i don't see it being uplifting that they came up with a vaccine but Maybe that's just All me. Right. I don't know. You make a fair point. Um, yeah. Do you want to get into uh, the the new segment on the show, Prop Cop? I fucking guess. <laughs> All right. What you got? What are you taking? So, uh, for this movie, the item that I would like to have the most, it's not really a whole min- a lot of options. But uh, my prop cop for contagion would be, I just want one of those vaccines. <laughs> like, just like the syringe? Yeah. All right. 
What about you? You got anything in there that you want? I want one of those fucking hazmat suits. Oh, shit. <laughs> Do you specifically on, want man. Jude Laws? I'm trying to be safe out here, son. <laughs> all right. Well, Fake um, vaccine ain't going to do shit. A hazmat suit. Fuck. I can go to the grocery store all I fucking want. <laughs> um, I do want to talk about two other little things real quick before we get into silver linings. Um, did you see how they, the like the marketing campaign for this movie, where they set up uh, two giant Petri dishes in a storefront window in Toronto? Yes, I did. <laughs> it's very interesting. You can find it on YouTube if you take a quick look. But basically, they set up these two different uh, Petri dishes in the storefront window that contain this bacteria and this fungi. Um, and after several days, the fungi grew and it spelled out the word contagion with a release date and everything. Showing you pretty much like how quickly things can spread and everything. It's pretty, pretty genius. It's pretty rad. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, you know, during the movie, we get the, the autopsy of Gwyneth Paltrow's character, um, mm. the head that like the mold of Gwyneth Paltrow's head that you see in the movie that gets cut open mm-hmm. is actually a leftover prop that they were going to use in the movie seven. Whenever... Oh shit. Really? Yeah. That's, I mean, if, if IMDb is to be believed, you know, well, Take it with a grain of salt, but I mean, that makes sense. From what I understood, they were going to show it in 7, but they just thought it was unnecessary to show her head in the box. Like, I do remember that little tidbit. So, that's, that's I mean, it looks great. So, I mean, that kind of connects two movies. Yeah, I mean, that as done. great as a dead Gwyneth Paltrow can be. <laughs> anyway. Much, yeah. Um. Alright, do you want to get into Silver Linings? Yep, you're first. Um, they got through that shit <laughs> with a vaccine. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you that. Yep. Not Pretty bad. straightforward. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like the obvious one is like John Hawks and his son got the, like John Hawks' son got the vaccine or whatever, but I'm going to go with like Matt Damon was fucking immune. Yeah. That motherfucker <laughs> like drew the fucking golden ticket. For sure. Like, that's amazing. Yep. Good for him. Do they mention, I, f- I don't remember, do they mention if people in the movie are, um, I know they mentioned Matt Damon's immune, but do they mention any discussion of, like, asymptomatic people? I don't remember. I don't think so. Was Matt Damon the only one who's immune? He's the only one that's mentioned on screen. That and I remember. His daughter, they don't mention her. Whether or not I don't she think is. she was. Because I, I think that's one of the plot points is that she isn't. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, what's your pick me up movie alternative, Mally? What's the movie? Oh, God. You should watch. Um, I mean, I'm going to go with another Soderbergh film uh, The Informant. Okay. She's just fun. Matt Damon's in it. Yeah, okay. It's good. Um, and also, it's. I mean, fuck, this movie's based on a true story now. Um, but it, the informant's based on a true story. Yeah. And it's it's more, as you said, classic Soderbergh. There you go. So, yeah, highly recommend the informant if you've seen it. It's based on this guy um, who went undercover for the FBI. Um, and it's just, it's fucking hilarious. Um, I'm going to recommend a movie that I think I've recommended before as a paint me up movie alternative. Oh, but... so we just repeating ourselves now. But. I will uh, say it's, that before. it's kind of the perfect movie to watch to to watch as a companion to Contagion and also just to watch while you're in quarantine anyway. But I think you should watch This is the End. Oh, good fucking choice. Sir. I, I, man, I haven't rewatched that. I, I just did. Honestly, I might rewatch that now. I just did rewatch it. It still holds up, of course, but it's also interesting to see it from the point of view of someone in lockdown, like when we can't oh, go anywhere. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> especially when they're discussing rationing, like the candy bars and everything. <laughs> uh, still holds up. CT crunch. Yep. So, um, Molly, good choices. Good would choices. you recommend this movie? Oh hell yeah! Check it out. All right. Um. All right. Like I said, I think it has a strong start. I think the middle yeah, section yeah, yeah. is a chore to get through. You're a chore. <laughs> and the movie the movie doesn't even really feel like it's done once the credit rolls it kind of just fades out there's no real climax I, I don't know it it doesn't really 
have a great ending, but I th- I'd say if you're curious, why not? If you've already seen it, it's probably not worth the rewatch. I mean, unless you're just really curious how much it, it imitates real life right now. Um, yeah, that's that's all I got. I'm sure. Why not? All right. Anything else, Mally? That's it for me. All right. Well, thank you again for listening, everybody. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, please subscribe, rate, leave feedback, all that good stuff, wherever you're listening to us at. Um, if you don't like the current platform you're on, we're on pretty much every podcasting streaming platform there is. So just you know, search for a different one. Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, we're on all that stuff. Um, we're also on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, and we also have a subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist, uh, where you can, you know, discuss the movies with other people. You can leave a suggestion for a movie you think we should cover. Anything you want to do, you can do it there. Uh, last but not least, Mally, we have our clue for next week's episode, which is your pick. So do you want to yes. give us... Uh, so next week, as I kind of made Dustin defend this choice Mm -hmm. i feel like you're gonna be asking me to to defend next week's film (laughs) i look forward to it um but don't worry um i do have a lot of so next week's episode will probably be the most you've ever heard me talk on an episode of this podcast oh boy um i get i'll drop a little hint Mm -hmm. um three the three um, but yeah, next week's gonna be very interesting. Um, yeah, it's mainly an excuse to for me to talk about something that is related to the movie, <laughs> kind of like right. this episode was. All right, we're trying new stuff out in season four, y'all. Well, Steph. All right. Uh, well, let's get out of here then. I got nothing else to talk about. All right. Uh, so stay safe out there, everyone. Of course, wash your hands, all that good shit. Don't touch people. In fact, when this is over, continue doing those things. I can't yeah, believe... Yeah, and still, just, even if, you know, we're all safe and can go outside again, please, don't come anywhere near me. I just still, I can't believe that we're, that people apparently didn't know to wash their hands. Like, th- the fact that this has been such a huge, like, marketing thing of, oh, wash your hands, wash your hands, like... The fact that people didn't know to do that already is very concerning I was like, to me. Do you, like, do you motherfuckers like no? Like, apparently, I, again, I think I've said this before. Like, I'm the dude that, like, even before all this, if I were like, if I went to the grocery store, like, I would wipe down the fucking basket before I picked it up. Before all this shit started, this yeah. like this has been my Super Bowl. It's been great. I mean, if you have to have someone tell you to wash your hands, you're a fucking grown up. Act like a grown up. Act like a fucking (laughs) grown-up. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, Thank you for listening, everyone. We're we're not going to top that joke. And until next week, as always, wash your fucking hands. (laughs) Okay, yeah. Um, Wait, what did you say? I don't know. I was going to say what we usually say, but I think I said eggs. (laughs) Excelsior! 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 Look at us!